Hallelujah. Ministries. Hallelujah. And we thank you for tuning in here with the bishop and the preacher for the hour is the Bishop Johnny Rutledge with messages of hope, inspiration, and truth for you today. God bless you. Glory to God. We praise God and we thank you for allowing us to come into this space where you are totally invited to do and to be according to the will of God for your life. Isn't it wonderful to have such a great introduction and such a great invitation to Christ where you can join in with this holiness and this gospel and become whatever God has in purpose and intended for you to become. You don't have to be delayed in being who you are or what you perceive. You can be that today. You can be that right now. But I'm so happy that the Lord would have allowed us, me and my wife, to speak these words to you. She said hope. And just have some hope in what God has promised for you and you alone. Now, I know that the world is doing their thing. And like my wife said, you know, every now and then, you'll understand it's a covenant that God made that he intended to keep. God does not break his word. He promised to love you for all eternity. Just obey him. Live according to his word and you'll, you'll eat the good of the land. You will reap a reward and a fruit that no one can even deny. Tell it, Bishop. Tell you'll it. see God in his best form simply because you obey him. Everybody thinks that God, when well, he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. So tell me now, is the unjust a wheat or a tear? Thank you. Now, I'm saying to you because the rain hit both. Yes. The rain hit both. Yes. But only one produced a fruit. Yes, sir. And you want to be a wheat. You want to be a fruit producing wheat so yes, you sir. can reproduce and feed and bless and just continue to grow and flourish in your way. You don't want to be a tear because the rain will hit you. You will produce, but it won't be a fruit. Thank you, Jesus. So listen to me now very carefully. Humble yourself and allow God to take over because you don't need to drive yourself nowhere. Yes. You don't need to take yourself nowhere. Thank you. you need to let God take over and control you and lead and guide you by way of the Holy Spirit and watch where you end up. Yes. You'll be in a better place than you ever even imagined because God has not taken you where you need to be until you surrender and relax and give him the yes, control. Sir. Jesus Preach is it, trying. Bishop. Jesus is trying to save a soul today. Jesus is trying to heal a soul. Jesus is trying to restore. So don't get confused about all this hype about what your position, where you've been, what they told you about yourself. Start fresh like a baby and let God grow you the way He want to grow you. Bishop. You won't be late to the party. Hey. You'll be on time. You'll be with time, and you'll be according to the Lord's time. So don't worry about what happened. Don't worry about what they said. Don't worry about what you didn't do. Don't worry about what you did. Now is your golden moment to yes, begin sir. a brand new life, brand new to life. grow and to become the best yes, child of God yes. you can be. Preach it, Bishop. This is that hour for you. Yes. I thank y'all for allowing me and, my wife, me and my wife to come in. I love that woman so much. Oh, she's the, she's the love of my life. Everything about her makes a difference for me. And I know that this is a time for people to understand. With all this variance of, of viruses and all this stuff bringing on death, you better see life in this situation. Yes. You better see prosperity in this situation. And you better see hope in this situation. Because this stuff come to deceive the massive and make them lose faith and hope and, and start doubting God. But God say, don't ever doubt That's me. That's right. Come on, Believe baby. in God. Trust yes, God because he's a deliverer. He came to set the captive yes, free. Sir. And he didn't come to kill you. God didn't come to destroy you. God didn't come to steal from you. God came to give you life yes. and life more abundantly. And that's what our it is. Yeah, that's what our it is. That's what time it's it is. It's more life coming from Jesus. Yes, sir. See, the word is Jesus. The word is Jesus. It became flesh. And now you have the right to enjoy what that word means. Yes. It means long life. It means prosperity. It means good health. Yes. But it overall, it defines the very meaning of wealth. Yes, sir. No one could compare to what you have when you have Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. So trust him. 
believe in him, rely on him, and give him what he needs. I'm so happy about this thing. I don't even want to sit down, but I know i got to tell you something. God want to love you in spite of yourself. Yes. He want to love you in spite of what they lied on you, yes. how they trick you, how they stole from you, how they deceive you. God still want to love you. Yes. God want to provide for you and your family. I know that they lied on you. I know that they tricked you. I know you went the wrong way 20, 30 years. But God said, I am the, I'm, I'm the way maker. Yes, sir. I'm going to make a way out of no way for you. Yes. I'm going to straighten your life out. Yes. I'm going to give you what you should have already had. Yes. I'm going to restore unto you the canker worm ate your good. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make your, your beauty for ashes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to renew you. I'm going to restore you. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to give you something Hallelujah. you never have even seen. Because Thank you, you are my child. God loves to touch a dying soul in yes. giving life. Lazarus, come forth. Hallelujah. And they say he came forth. Yes, sir. But Jesus said, you're not just right, Lazarus. You need to come forth brand new. In other words, the stuff that you died in cannot represent your new person. Yes, sir. You must come forth with a new clothing, Hallelujah. a new mind, a new face, a new body, a new idea, a new life. Lazarus, come forth with the new Lazarus Hallelujah. because you've been born again. You've been born again. You've been set That's free. That's what Hallelujah. God is saying today. You too can be born again. Hallelujah. Friends and brothers, Bishop. I love you. I praise God for you. I'm so happy about this Jesus thing. Yeah. Sometimes we forget that it's all in the praise. My wife is a, a praise maker. She get into the praise and she go. And sometimes the Lord humbles her spirit. And bring her to sing in a song. Sometimes she preach. But you know what? We should cherish and we should, we should enjoy every gift, every fruit that comes from each person that God has established and put in our lives. Today's message should be one that draws us into a different light. And for some reason or the other, we need to tell ourselves this is the best time and this is the only time God is going to Take us from doubt to hope. Hallelujah. Now listen to me very carefully. A lot of questions have been asked because a lot of us are confused about our position. We oftentimes want to know, we want to know, are we doing what God called us to do? Are we being exactly what the Lord has ordained for us to be? Are we acting according to God's will and purpose for our life? I get excited every now and then, and I talk about this Jesus. And I give him all the glory. I worship him with so much passion. It physically cuts me. It tear my body to worship him. But you know what I found out? Is that one thing that the Lord would not allow me to do? Now listen to me very carefully. The Lord would never allow those that whom he called, he justifies, and those he justifies, he qualifies, and it's some great morning, some great day he's going to glorify the Lord never will allow you to, to be, betray him. Hallelujah. What do you mean, Rutledge? Well, if God is who he say he is, and he's all-powerful, and he's omnipresent, and he's everything all the time, yes, sir. if God is the creator of all things, First John talks about it, John 1 talks about it. the word was manifested into the flesh and, uh, and he made all things and nothing that was made that wasn't made by him. If God has this great power, then wouldn't he have known whether or not you was going to be faithful to him? I'm talking about you. See, God knows all things. That's what the Bible teaches us. He knows all things. Well now, Jesus, since you know everything, 
Do you know that I'm going to lie on you, Peter? Peter. Jesus, do you know Peter, Peter, Peter? Peter had the right to ask Jesus his question. Well, Master, do you know I'm going to lie on you? Not just one time, but three times? And Jesus would have answered Peter like this. Yes, you are. And you're going to do it quick. Before the cop crows three times, you're going to lie on me three times. Now, the fascinating thing about that is, God knew all of that about Peter, but he also knew all of that about John, James, Nathaniel, Philip, Mark, everybody that's recorded in this Bible, God knew what they was going to do when they were going to do it. And my dear friend Thomas, God knows you're going to, Thomas, you, you ain't going to believe half or nothing. You, you're just going to doubt me, Thomas. God would have known all that, y'all. God would have had no doubts about these behaviors. So if you are a child of God today and you're listening to me, I want to, well, maybe I just say it like this. God know you're going to sin. God know you're going to lie. God know you're going to fall. God know you're going to fail. God know you're going to do something else instead of being sanctified, holy. Thank you. God know you're going to not be 100% right today. God knows that. Hallelujah. God know we all have come short, but he know you're going to come short again. God knows that. What else do he know? He also know that he put his spirit in you. What do you mean? Well, then he put his spirit in everybody. He blew his breath into Adam. And Adam's breath replicated itself into every human being by way of generations. Now, how come it is that that breath didn't keep everybody? These are questions we dare not ask anybody but ourselves. Why did we fall the last time? You hear me? You, you, you slipped, you tripped. The Bible said you backslid. And then you ask the question, am I even saved? Then you went on down the road knowing that all these things had happened and you look to the right and the left and everybody seems to be Holy Ghost filled. Everybody seems to be fire baptized. Everybody seems to be righteous. But here you is in the mud, in the slip, in the trip, sinning again. So the question is, who did this to you? Did you get victimized by your flesh? Or did you just volunteer with your mind to break the laws of God? I want to talk to you today Lord have mercy. because I want to help you. Thank you, Lord. I want to help you because I've been helped. Thank you, Jesus. Most of you know me, know that I wrote a book called The Will of a Man. Mm -hmm. It was not defining a man male. It was defining the creation of man, which was Adam and Eve. Man and woman, both man defining every human being. The will be spoken as free will mm -hmm. of a man. Yes. You have choices. You can make choices. You can make decisions. You can say yes. You can say no. And then that responsibility is no longer on God. It is therefore your free will. Yes. And you choose according to your mind. Well, what do you mean, brother? Well, sometimes we get confused. Sometimes we say yes when we really mean no. Yes, sir. Well, why do we say yes if we meant no? Well, let me say it like this right here, right? There was a man in the Bible that said yes, but he meant no. There was a man in the Bible that walked with Jesus, but he really didn't mean to. There was a man that 
classified himself and was called and a disciple of Jesus. Mm -hmm. There was a man that was identified by everybody in Palestine as being one of Jesus' apostles. Thank you, Lord. There was a man that was looked upon by all those that knew the great divine holy Jesus Christ. You know, that son of God, the one that raised Lazarus, the one that walked on water, the one that rebuked all of them demons, the one that stayed out in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights. That man had a companion that actually walked with him, talked with him, but never really intended to. Didn't even want to, but he did. And he tried to disguise it by agreeing with what Jesus was doing. Mm. And he walked with him day and night. He slept with him. They slept on the side of the mountain, and he slept right there next to Jesus. How do you be in Christ? And I'm, I don't want to say, and you slip and trip. How do you be in Christ and you don't and you slip don't and trip? Get. How do you be a saint, a saved person, and then you don't sin? How you do that? How do you walk on this earth as if though you don't lie, you don't steal, you don't kill, you don't cheat? How do you do that? See, the question has to be answered by the individual. Yes. Because this man, this man answered that question. He answered the question. That we are afraid to answer. We are afraid to tell the truth that we lied somewhere on somebody yes. after we got saved. Yes. We're afraid to tell the truth that we slipped, tripped, and tipped after we got saved. Thank We're you. afraid to tell the truth that we knew we were stealing folks' money, but yet we was preaching in the name of Jesus. We're afraid to tell the truth that we was in somebody's bed, in somebody's face, that was not our wife, that was not our husband. We are afraid to tell the truth that we did. Praise the Lord, tell the truth. This the man Lord. told the truth. Yes. And I want to introduce you to him. Tell it, Johnny. I want to introduce you to this fella. I want to introduce you to him. He told the truth. He told the truth. He told the truth. And I want to introduce you to it. Matter of fact, when he told the truth, it scared him. Lord and mercy. It scared him, I'm telling you. He told the truth about himself. Now listen to me very carefully because a lot of you are already sure you know everything about everything and can't nobody tell you nothing. And I'm one of them kind that thought I knew so much until I didn't know that I didn't even know that I didn't know so much. Yes. I didn't even know that I didn't know. But I know now that I didn't know. Yes, sir. Listen to me very carefully. In the book of Mark, in the 14th chapter, it reads like this. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. Mm -hmm. And they began to be sorrowful, and they said unto each other, as one and say, Is it I? Another said, Is it I? Everybody said, is it me? Huh. Everybody want to say, is it me? Am, am, I, am, I, am I the one Jesus? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, you weren't with me 15 minutes ago when I was on that, you know, uh, I, was, I was wrong, Jesus. I was doing this whatever bit. Just a little while ago, Jesus, before we sat at the table, I was backwards, Jesus. You weren't with me now, Jesus. Jesus, who going to betray it? Was it me? Jesus, is it me that's going to break your heart, Jesus? And all of them asked that question, and they began to get a little nervous and look at each other, and they couldn't understand because I guess to be sorrowful means that you are somewhat in a guilt state of realizing that you already done failed, sin, lied, and did something that Jesus equated with betrayal. Hallelujah. And you feel like you have done that. Yes. Or else you wouldn't be so sorrowful. If you know that you didn't do it, you would have stood up and said, well, hey, Jesus, 
I got you. I got your number, man. You, where is he at? Because I know I'm not going to betray you, Jesus. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be with you, Jesus. Yes. But these guys were sorrowful because they thought that either one of them could have had the very situation that would have identified them as betrayers of Jesus. Lord have mercy, Bishop. Y'all watch yourself now. Hey, when you get overconfident. And you get too far ahead of your skis. And you're going down the road with the wagon uh, uh, in, front of, uh, in front of the mule. You're not, you're not, you're not, walking. when you put your shoes on, you put them on backwards. Watch yourself. Because the truth is, we all have sinned and fallen short. And come to a place where we need to repent daily and ask God to forgive us. Lord, we are sorry that we said and done things to our loved one. Sorry that we said and done things to know that you trusted with us. Sorry, God. God, we're sorrowful. Preach it. And you Bishop. know that you did it. Yes, sir. Everybody sitting at that table was sorrowful. Yes, sir. Well, y'all want me to hurry up and get to Judas. I will. But what about the sorry people? They sorrowful. They was already gifted. But because I came to you with my spirit, only, a, only one of you did not take it. What do you mean, brothers? Well, the Bible tells you what, 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 what I mean. The Bible has a better explanation than myself. It says this. And he answered and said unto them, now he talking to twelve, but only eleven had this sorrowful spirit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, now. <laughs> it's, 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 it's teaching time. Yes, sir. It's teaching time, you heathen. Thank you, It's Lord. teaching time, Thank you Gentile. Lord. It's teaching time, Thank you, you human being. You got to stop trying to be God and let God work out the, let it work out these flaws. Let it work out these, these old crooks. Let it work out these old uh, bad things. Let it work out these old flip-flops. Let it work out these bad uh, things in my mind. Let God clean you out. Yay! You got to stop trying to play like you're some kind of perfect being. Yes, sir, Bishop. You're so holy. You're so righteous. You're so blessed. Tell it, Bishop. Watch me preach now. I've been watching me. And you got a sissy strut. Your mind is backwards. Fooling a woman to marry you so you can disguise your love for a man. God told you to wake up for this hour. He will reveal and, and all the mysteries, all the secrets will be revealed. You cannot deny that Jesus is Lord. Yes. And, that, and the Bible says, yes. when you was being counted, everybody threw their hand up and the Father said, you are not qualified. I got me a Savior. I got me a Lamb. I got me a perfect a perfect lamb without a blemish. Yes. I got somebody that can go and redeem Adam's yeah, children. Jesus. And I'm guaranteeing oh, yeah. you it wasn't you. Hallelujah. So this hour, now don't Jesus. be afraid now, don't be afraid yeah. now because preaching will, preaching will present itself. The Bible said, how can he preach? Except that God sent him, but what will he preach? It must be the divine holy word of God, which is nothing but the gospel of Jesus the Christ. Of Jesus. What Jesus lived, what he said, what he did, that's the liberation. All right, now, and the devil said, well, I know all about the uh, Birmingham News. I know all about the New York Times. I know all about Wall Street Journal. But I don't know about this word because I'm not given privilege to interpret the meaning because I don't have the spirit. spirit. Yes, sir. It's teaching time. Hallelujah. And he answered and said unto them, It is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him, but woe to the man whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good was it for, for that man never if he had never even been born. Lord, have mercy. 
And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it. Now, wait a minute, Jesus. You just said that it was good that the fellow never was born, and you still going to give him bread? Yes, sir. Mercy of the Lord. Jesus, yes, you still going to feed him? Yes, sir. Jesus, you done declared that he's going to betray you. Yes. He's going to actually be a stumbling block. He gonna be what 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 he gonna be what Zach, Zachariah said. He gonna be what 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 Psalm say. He gonna be Jesus. He gonna do all that to you, and you yet gonna still feed him. Yes. Come on now, Jesus. Come on now, Jesus. It's teaching time. And the Bible says Jesus must have fed him because in the twenty second verse it said, and they did eat. Yes. Jesus took the bread and blessed it. Do y'all know that when the bread get blessed, that it then become holy? Hallelujah. Then he, then he break it and gave to them and said, take it eat. This is my body. That's right. Y'all stop getting mad at folks um, when they hurt you, when they lie on you and they steal from you. Jesus knew the man was going to betray him. Jesus knew something was going to happen bad to him. Yes. He took the bread, he blessed it. Gave it to me. That bread became a death blow to that man. That bread, which was holy, became a gut punch to that man. That bread became hot coals on the head of the betrayer. That bread became weight around the neck. Throw him off into the ocean where he will find the bottom and never return. That bread became his damnation. Stop being mad at folks, y'all. And feed them holy bread. Break the bread. Cook the bread. And then give it to them to eat. Now you ain't got nothing to do with them betraying you. Break that bread. Yes. That bread God gave you shared with your enemy. <laughs> Let them see the goodness of God. Yes. For you don't know out of the 12 which one it is that may get saved, may retain the holiness, but somebody has got to betray our Lord and Savior. Preach it, Bishop. He said, Cain, that he may be a sacrifice, and God manipulated Satan to join in with the plan and win the one over that betrayed him so that he could fulfill that divine word of God that he would go out on Calvary and die and be a sacrifice so that sin could be removed from the earth yes. and that every living soul could be redeemed yes. by the blood of the, the Lamb. Blood of the Lamb. There's a purpose in everything. God got Y'all listen to me now. Hallelujah. This thing is for real. Yes, it what is. What we preach it. Yes, sir. Uh, Matthews 26 and 14. Matthews 26 and 14. Then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief and said unto them, What will you give me? Mm. I will deliver him unto you. Lord have mercy. The only they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray Jesus. From that time. From that time. From that time, he sought opportunity to betray Jesus. Now, right before that happened, in the 26th chapter of Matthew. I want to thank God for giving us opportunity to, to just have a moment yes. where we can talk about him. Yes. Such a blessing. Do y'all know I ain't got to be perfect? Do you know you ain't got to be the best in the best in the West or whatever? Do you know you can just be a child of God and yes. give God the greatest glory yes. in the lights and the heavens and everything and the angels are rejoicing because your genuineness in the presence of God and his love for you radiates through your behavior because you ain't playing with God. You ain't pretending with God. Therefore, if you will not betray God. Thank you, Jesus. Hear me now. Hear me now. There's some message in this. 
Jesus in the 26th chapter of the book of Matthews. Uh, it said that it came to pass. Everything nowadays come to pass. Come to pass. pass. <laughs> yes. It really One does. Way or another, does it, it really does. Yes, sir. What he's saying in that passage of scripture when he says it come to pass, it says nothing came to stay yes. present. Everything comes and then has to become the past. Yeah, even us, Johnny. Even Everything, us. Be, you see, God let it happen. Yes. Because only God is eternal. Yes, sir. And within him, you can have eternal life. Yes. But you are not eternal, you yes. see. Yes. Whether you think eternity is is one thing or the other. God alone gives that. Matter of fact, you don't understand. Because the time of man is within some sphere. Man time is circular. It's all going one way to the other way. And it ends somewhere. But God time is linear. God time stays on its own course. Going where it go. And it has no beginning. And it has no ending. But the man time... Tell it. Has a stopping point. Yes, everyone. Hard so you take your up. circle and you 360 degrees. Get your point and set it. Now, right when you come back to that point, your time is up. up. Amen. So God locates himself within your time. Yes, sir. In the center of your time, if he gets purposely in the center, perfectly in the center, Every point you get to, when you're five, he that close to you. Ain't when you're you. 50, he that close to you. When you're 100, he that close. No matter what age you get, in your time circle, God is present with you, and he's right there as he was when you were born. Thank you, Father. But let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about Jesus. Jesus came on the outside of time. Jesus was a, in the beginning. That was Jesus was the creator, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus on the outside of your bubble. Now, Jesus does not, he don't have to wait to see when you come around to 50. Because he's standing there creating you so you can reach 50. So when your 50th year comes, your 60th year, or whatever year you get to, God has already prepared what you need in order that you would be faithful to him. Yes, sir. What do you mean, Reverend? You see, free will does not mean that you will stay in line with what you are purposed for. Free will means that when the opportunity comes, just like flesh does, you will lie, you will steal, you will kill. Don't you let nobody tell you. Tell the temptation of the flesh is real, but without God, it is damnation. Yes, sir. But with God... It's redemption. And salvation. Hallelujah. And salvation. Thank you, Father. That's what it is with God. Because I don't care how horrible was it that a man had to die. Yet a God, but a man had to die. How horrible was it, y'all? His blood was so powerful. That the Bible says that the, the earth quaked. You mean tell me one drop of blood made an earthquake? One drop of blood hit the ground and made the earth quake? One drop of blood cleaned every human being, soul that will ever say, Lord, have mercy on me. Yes, sir. How you know that, brothers? Because the man on the right side said, Father, when you come into your kingdom, Remember me, Jesus said, not tomorrow, but this day yes, sir. thou shall be with me in, in paradise. That's right. One drop of blood cleaned the whole entire world. Yes, sir. And they say, stretch them out, hands wide. Do you know that Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, all religion got nailed out there on Calvary and it could not come down? It could not go farther. God nailed it to the cross so that when the blood flowed from his body, everything that had been tricked by religion could not be redeemed. Yes, sir. And returned back to the Father. Yes, sir. Don't you know God fulfilled his purpose? Jesus Christ even tricked Lucifer yes. to help bring it about. Lord, I'm 
Don't you know if Satan would have known that God was going to stomp his head? Third chapter Genesis and fulfill the promise he made to Eve, Satan would have not sent Judas to the priest. Yes, sir. The Bible said when, 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 when the devil came upon him, he went to the priest. Yes. And he made a covenant and they gave him 30 pieces of silver. Satan fell for the trick that God played on his mind to make him go so Jesus could walk into his own destiny of being the redeemer for all mankind. God used everything and everybody to get his work done and you are no different. Yes, sir. Well, why did I go there? God needed you to be in that cesspool. God needed you to be that liar. God needed you to be that, that old tricky person so he could get his glory out of you. What do you mean, Rutledge? Well, you remember now, let me tell you a story. I was in a gambling house one time, and boy, I hadn't even started preaching legally, but I was preaching in the world, and I hadn't understood things, and I just had come out of my worldly behavior, a cocaine addict, a drug addict, just come out of New Jersey, New York, all this stuff, and I'm gambling in the gambling house, and I'm talking about Jesus all the time. And this young man in there, he's just gambling, dealing drugs, everything. And I looked at him and I saw the blood of Jesus on him. I said, boy, you're going to preach the gospel and you, you know the Bible and, and God's going to use you. I don't know nothing about you, but God said. That young man turned and looked at me. He said, get off of me. I'm in this gambling place. I got drugs in my pocket. I don't want to hear nothing about no Jesus. What crazy man is trying to preach in a gambling house? I told him, I don't know, but it just happened. And when he became the preacher that he is today, hmm. he oftentimes let me know that every word God spoke in that gambling house was even more powerful than the word that his pastor spoke in the church. What am I saying to you? I'm saying God will use you even with your purpose being defective or you be defiled based upon your choices. God will use you to bring about his plan and purpose for the life and the glory of someone that needs yes. to get saved. Hallelujah. Just be real. Yes, be real. Be real in your stand. Be real in your preaching. Be real in your praise. Be yes. real in your life. If you got a problem, call it a problem. That's right. Stop pretending. Take it to God. I knew a preacher in Atlanta got bald-headed because his hair fell out and all oh, said, and he went and bought him a wig and said, I'm going I'm I'm to wear my hair. <laughs> I said, man, I, you know, it's, it's time to let it go, buddy. <laughs> no, 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 no. I can buy me some hair. I can buy me some hair. Then the next thing I know he's wearing makeup. Then the next thing I know he's wearing women's clothes. Lord have mercy. Hear me? A powerful preacher. The largest church in Atlanta. And guess what happened? He bought all that stuff. And he did all those things. And he died. And Satan took his life. Yes, sir. Hear me now. If God wants you to live according to what he called you for, somebody needs to agree. You don't need a short man syndrome. If you short, fella, that's how God needed you so you can get down under me and yes. talk to the people. If you're a tall, fella, he needs you to be tall. Woman, if you big, God needs for you to be heavy. If you little, God needs for you. Stop trying to make yourself into something else. That you're not. Hallelujah. That you will never be. Thank you, Lord. You was born like this. God wants you to be blessed like this. Hallelujah. Tell it, Johnny. Be Tell real it. in your walk with Christ. Yes. Be real in your talk with Christ. Yes. Accept yourself. How can you come to God pretending that you're something that you're not and knowing that God know all the time? Yes. He looked around at the table. Everybody getting ready to eat. And he says, one of this is going to dip in the bread in the, in the sock. He's going to eat with me. It's going to betray me. How come everybody don't know who this is? Yes. How come them other boys couldn't identify who this was?
Because Jesus needed him to be in disguise. Lord have mercy. Listen, listen, listen. I wrote the book on free will. Preach it, Johnny. Preach it. Don't fool yourself. God know who you are already. Don't fool yourself so you can fool others because ain't nobody fooled. Ain't nobody fooled ain't by nobody your trickery fooled. because I saw that fellow with the wig on. And you can't put on a wig and not be looked at as a wig. I tell you. <laughs> I don't care who he is. Don't fool yourself so you can fool others because ain't nobody fooled. If God called you to be his representation and you got big eyes. Say that. Let your big eyes shine. Amen. If God call you and you only a certain height, stand proud. Hallelujah. If God called you and you got one eye little in the other, God knew what it made. Thank you, Jesus. He'll get the glory out of you. Cosmetology and all this stuff. And don't listen to me now. Nobody need to be cutting on you. Nobody need to be trying to rearrange you and try to make you something that you're not. Yes. Be real in the presence of God. God knew who was at the table. He knew which one was going to betray him. He knew exactly what they was going to do. See, if the world don't know, that don't mean God don't know. Yes, sir. You see, it was a very moving thing that happened in that last supper. Because he told him after Jesus got tired to say, go, get up, go do what do, you're supposed you to do. You got to do quickly. Quickly, get out of here and go do it. Now, now everybody looking around, see, why didn't the boys give say, oh, that's who's going to do it. Why they didn't do it? You know why? Because they were still consumed with sorrow. Yes. Why? Because they were guilty. Yes. Everybody got something that ain't right. Everybody, hallelujah. We all have something, and I can't stand a clown to tell me I got it together. Yes, sir. I'm perfect. Yes. I've been here. I know what I'm talking about. I speak these words and like a word. <laughs> Fellow, you ain't nothing but flesh. Amen. And, and that perfect. flesh is defiled. Yes, sir. In the presence of God, he says, filthy rags. Right. It's not even worth it. God can't digest the smell of your flesh. Thank you, Lord. And you talking about you somebody. Lord have mercy. How pretty you think you got. Oh Lord. Your new shoes and your new sh your shorts and things. Lord have mercy. God don't like a fake nothing. So he called Judas out. Yes. And he sent him forth to fulfill his plan, his purpose. Some people say, well Judas didn't have no choice. Judas didn't want to God would not have called him a betrayer if God would have created him a, 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 a person that had no option. Betray means you could have not done it. Betray means you made a choice. You chose to do this. Yes, sir. You had the free will to do it. Well, God showed us tricky. God has the means to get his will done, even if he used those Hebrew women that were midwives to lie to Pharaoh and make sure that the babies live. Yes, sir. God want to get his work done even though he had to use a Judas. Yes. You hear what I'm trying to tell you? Yes. Judas was a liar, a deceiver. What do you mean, brothers? Well, these three things right here is what I mean. First of all, he didn't like Jesus. What do you mean, Rutledge? Well, read the Bible carefully. The, it, chronologically, all the ones that was called by Jesus stayed in unison, stayed when you read about uh, Peter, James, and John. Everybody is close to Jesus. Everybody got relationship. Every time you read about Judas, Judas. he's last to be called. Why? Because he's somewhere out scheming. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, uh, if he had any kind of sense. He would have put the bag down. I'm about to say, worry and about the money. Up, and picked up, worry about and the wrong pe thing. And picked up, and picked up Jesus. Mm -hmm. Picked up his, his lentil. Picked up yes. his... He would have thought about Jesus. Yes. The rest of the boys was conflicted because they said, well, Master, what kind of... What you got here? Even the wind and the rain obey you. Judas somewhere over there. I'm going to see how I can get... They said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see how much this going to bring. Mm -hmm. How much we will get out of this turn of events. Yes. Give me the bag, man. Do you know there was deacons in the church? I knew this church. 
Deacons in the church, they collect the money, go in the back, count the money, uh, praise the Lord, uh, and, and the preacher pray all the money, Father bless these here receipts, all oh, the money, money, money. And the deacon go into the church, he always wear them uh, high state side of boots, you know, and he sat back there at the desk. Now, nobody in there but him. Mm. Until the pastor put one of them little cameras back there. And saw him slipping the money. He take the money, and the pastor got him five times. Take the money and, and take dollars and stick it in Not his in boot. boot. Mm. And when he put it in his boot, he get up and walk and smile. Pastor, this me do the money now. Do the money. And every time he did something. So my point is, Judas was stealing from God with the money. That's all he wanted to do was steal. Mm. He was a thief. What a thief do? They kill. They steal. And they destroy. Yes. That's what the Bible say. The thief come but to kill still and destroy. That's what Judas was. Stop trying to put, put this on God that Judas betrayed him. God did not make Judas betray him. Judas betrayed God because he was a thief. He was in his heart. Hallelujah. It was in his heart because he didn't love Jesus. Yes. Everybody else loved Jesus. Yes. Even though Down Thomas loved him. Tell it. Judas didn't love him. Didn't even have a real good relationship with him. Thank you, Lord. And another thing Judas did. Let me tell you what he did. He made his mind up that one day Jesus was going to be popular. You, do you know that most folks join you today because they can look ahead and see that you're going to be famous? They're they going to be on your team say, well, remember now, I was with you when you didn't have nothing. I remember now, you remember now, you didn't know where you was going. I was there. And then all of a sudden, now that you're famous, you owe me. Mm -hmm. Me and you been together all this time. I want a position. Judas thought when Jesus destroyed the Romans that he would have a high position, probably the secretary of treasure. Because he had planned that if Jesus overthrew the Romans, he would be there with Jesus and get the blessings that would come with this new government in charge. But Jesus, Lord have mercy. our Lord and Savior Jesus, our Lord and Savior. he said, I came not, I came not to destroy it. I came not to break down, but to build up. Now, Jesus knew that Judas wanted a revolution. Yes. Some of y'all out there in church want a revolution. Take it over. We need to take the world. We need to get that money. We need, i tell you what you do. Next time that poor man asks for a quarter, tell them to give you a quarter. No. Next time that woman needs some groceries, tell her to come join the church and be a janitor. We'll pay her $5 an hour. The next time, see, see what I'm trying to tell you is, he thought that when he got on Jesus' side and Jesus destroyed the Romans, he would be one of the captains in the army. Mm -hmm. Jesus' army. Lord have mercy. He didn't know until Jesus gave up the ghost that Jesus came to die, not to live. Jesus didn't come to start a new revolution. Lord. Jesus didn't come to start a new government. Jesus didn't come to destroy the Romans. Jesus didn't come to put the Jews at the top of the thing. Jesus came to die so that the world could be set free. Thank you, Jesus. Romans, Jews, Gentiles, everybody yes. could be set free yes, because Lord. they were all captives in his eyesight. Yes, Every Lord. human being that had sin in them were captives to Jesus. Yes, sir. And Isaiah said he came to set them folks free. Yes, he did. So Judas thought he was coming to create this army, this big old war machine. After all, ain't nobody ever had no magic like Jesus. Mm. You know what I mean? He told the folks, say, who you come and look for? And everybody fell dead. Well, if he got that kind of power, whoo, Jesus, I want to be with you. We don't even need no nuclear weapon. Lord, Just speak, God, and you tie the head. Yes, yeah, speak, Lord. Judas failed God because he was a thief. Y'all stop preaching that Judas was God's chosen vessel to betray him. Anybody could have went to the priest and gave up the location of Jesus, but Jesus was already sentenced to death. Lord have mercy. 
sentenced. Already sentenced to death, even before he went to the trial. The Bible says his father in heaven said, I need somebody I to need go to somebody. earth. Not to go down there and fight. Not to go down there and go and, down there and, and die. Go down there and die. Yeah. Jesus, what you coming here for? To D I E. Yes, sir. Ain't that's how you spell it, man? Yeah, that's how you spell it. To D I E. To die. Hallelujah. Jesus came to the world to die. Yes, sir. So that you and I may have life. Yeah. See, I, I want to I want to I want to straighten that out because Thank you, Jesus. I want to straighten that out because I know free will is on the table when you talk about Judas because everybody believe well if, if 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 Judas betrayed God and God created Judas then God must have made Judas to do that if Judas was a donkey he would have had no choice Lord have mercy. I'll say it to you again. Ooh, hallelujah. <clears throat> if Judas was a donkey, he would have had no choice. That's right. What do you mean? Well, you see, there was a donkey riding a prophet around. Mm -hmm. And the prophet couldn't see. But the donkey could see. Yes. You see, the Lord had given the donkey eyes. The Lord had given the donkey discernment. Yes. The Lord had given the donkey free will. But then there came a time... Well, the donkey made a decision. I see God up there with a flaming sword. I see an angel with a flaming sword. I'm not going any further, you fool, because he going to kill me and you. Yes. And the Bible said the donkey turned off and went into the field. Sure did. The Bible said the donkey turned off and went into the field. Now, if Judas was a donkey, he'd have turned off. <laughs> we we don't know. And went into the field. It would have been better if he had not even been born. Lord. Glory to God. But he wasn't no donkey. No, he wasn't. You see, God knew all of this ahead of time. We're trying to make some sense out of this conversation because we're saying that God knew that Judas was going to betray him, but God didn't make Judas a betrayer. That's right. You see what I'm saying? And we're not saying that Satan made him a betrayal because then Judas wouldn't be guilty. And Judas, they say, went out after his great craziness and hung himself from a tree and died. And the Bible says that money that he returned back to the temple, those men went out and bought a, a, a burial ground. That they went out and buy, bought a field. Now my point is, God did not make him do what he did. Up to the point that he chose to hang himself. He was under the influence of Satan, yes. but he chose Satan. Yes, that's it. Really, you've been preaching this all along. People have been denying the, the, the power to be. What I'm trying to tell y'all is don't wait till your deathbed yes. to think you're going to turn. Because yes. Judas was one step away from repentance and he couldn't do it. And if you get out here and you put yourself in that horrible place, and you make a decision, and you say, well, I'm just going to ask God to forgive me. You're going to hang from a tree because oh, you ain't going to have the mind to change. The heart to change either, Jimmy. I'm trying to tell you now. See, God is real. Yes. Amen. Amen. God is real. The preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ will set the captives free. It ain't pretty. You don't need a cathedral. You ain't got to have a multi-million dollar operation. Yeah. You just got to tell somebody tell about Jesus. Somebody. Tell him that he was born. Tell, tell him that he lives as a child. God. Tell him that he was an adult. Tell him that he preached his own word. Tell him that he obeyed his father. Yes, tell him that God. he found it not robbery, not like robbery, to be equal with God. Tell them that he loved everybody. Yes. Tell him that he hated no man. Tell him that he, he repented. For the sins of man. But he bore all man's sin. Tell them he was the light of the world. Tell them he went out on the cabaret. Hung up there and died. Tell them he gave his life. So that you can have life. Yes. Tell them that one day he's coming back for all of this. And every one of us that have declared ourselves his children. Tell them that if you're born again and five baptized, he lives in your heart. Tell them the truth. Tell them that Jesus Christ is no less or no more than the truth. Hallelujah. So help me God. Tell them. 
That's what this is. And watch the captives be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, let us pray. Father God, we pray that you would have been not only God in the minds and the hearts of those that heard this word, but Father, that you also be ahead of us, that the next step we take, Father, we are reminded that you, God, alone is our only passageway to salvation. Father, there is no other way for us to get to glory, no other way to have us to have a new life, except that it be by way of you. Lord, yes. we love you. We praise your holy, divine name. Yes. God, we give you the glory. And yes. somebody ought to be saying oh, amen. You know I'm somebody saying ought to be amen. saying amen. I'm saying amen. Somebody amen. ought to be saying amen. amen. I'm saying amen, Bishop. You know it's the Wednesday Night Fellowship, and I'll be looking for this hard word. I tell you, he ain't playing with you. And he ain't playing with me either. Hallelujah. We love you on today. We love the Lord. We love the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless Thank you, you Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Glory. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God is good to us. And he will never leave you or forsake you. Yes. We thank you for tuning in to the Wednesday Night Fellowship. We Amen. hope that you have a wonderful and prosperous life. Because if you know God, and he is the author and the finisher of your faith, Amen. and you have accepted him in the pardon of your sins, and you walking in that word, he will bring you to glory, to glory, to glory in this life. Amen. And he will fulfill in you his wonderful word. Amen. Oh, yes, but don't be a, don't be a tear. Amen. Be some wheat. Amen. I Glory love you to God. Today. God bless you. Tune in with our Sunday Night Live every Sunday. And stay tuned for next week on the Wednesday Night Fellowship. We love you on today. God bless you. Woo! <laughs> Wednesday Night Fellowship. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So, Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah.